speakers. Uh, I hope you will uh, listen and understand uh, why Kazakhstan is for nuclear weapon free world. Um, I would like to say that today's event we are dedicating to a special uh, date. Uh, it's 29th of August. On the 29th of August, uh, in 1949, the first nuclear test took place in eastern Kazakhstan at the Simi Palagans testing ground. That was uh, the first one, and at that time, of course, it was uh, a proud event for the former Soviet Union that we actually got a nuclear capability. But, you know, this cluster, after it was hundreds of others followed, and at the end today, when we look back, we understand that nothing comes without consequences. And the consequences are very, uh, very, very uh, <coughs> tragic. Kazakhstan has been the territory for uh, more than uh, five, almost 500 nuclear tests. 600 nuclear devices were tested on the surface in the air, uh, underground in Kazakhstan. And of course, uh, if you look at the cumulative capacity of all these tests, it lies like 2,500 of Hiroshima bombs, uh, which were blasted on the territory of Kazakhstan. You know, the fallout uh, of radiation, radiation exposure, all that affected, uh, according to the statistics, uh, we have limited statistics, we have uh, affected one and a half million people uh, in Kazakhstan. If you just compare it with the population, of Kazakhstan, 17 million. It's almost uh, every test person in Kazakhstan knows about what is the nuclear test, what are the effects, and what are the consequences of it. Because someone was affected in the time of the world, heard about it. That's why for Kazakhstan, 29th of August is uh, a very um, symbolic day. Because on the 29th of August, 1991, uh, President of Kazakhstan, uh, following the will of the people of Kazakhstan, closed the testing site forever. After more than 40 years of uh, nuclear testing. Uh, the beginning of it was uh, actually very interesting. Uh, and uh, I would say that uh, in February, uh, 1989, in Kazakhstan, there were thousands of people gathered in the former capital of Kazakhstan, Almaty, led by a very well-known poet, Oza Suleymanov, who actually condemned the nuclear testing and called people to fight against nuclear testing. At that time, Kazakhstan was still uh, in, in the former Soviet Union, was part of the former Soviet Union. And this moment quickly, very fast, uh, spread out all over Kazakhstan and get 2 million people sign the petition demanding the closing of the testing site. And I was actually myself involved with that, and I remember very well the emotional state of the people. I myself visited several times in the Polaris area where uh, most of the testing took place and most of the people were affected by nuclear testing. And talking to people there, you know, uh, you really understand that behind the politics there is always a human cost. And you see, you look into the eyes of uh, mothers, of young ladies who are afraid of giving birth to children because they're not sure about the uh, health of the newborn. Uh, because the radiation caused genetic mutations and defects were widespread in uh, that area. According to the, again, statistics which we have, the uh, birth rates uh, of 
for the uh, children without limbs or with any depression is higher than in any other place in Pakistan. Uh, the uh, cancer diseases are higher, uh, the index is higher than in any other, 50% higher than in any other uh, areas of Pakistan. So uh, it's a huge uh, people's uh, tragedy in Kazakhstan, which we today try to mark through this uh, international day. The initiative uh, to call this uh, day an international day against nuclear tests was again coming from Kazakhstan, and uh, we worked in the United Nations with other countries uh, to have this day as a symbolic reminder to us that we need to work to ban the nuclear uh, tests as a first step to ban the nuclear weapons uh, uh, through the state. And uh, you know, in 2009, uh, the UN Security Council, uh, in the UN, uh, uh, there was a resolution adopted which actually proclaimed this day, at the 29th of August, the day against the nuclear weapons. And from that time on, uh, we uh, arranged different kinds of events in different parts of the world with uh, different countries. Uh, this kind of events to remind people that we have to work together. Uh, you know, what we think, uh, what, uh, I think that the President uh, of the Republic of Kazakhstan he was uh, very clear when he was talking about the nuclear weapons and uh, international security. He said that uh, today we don't have uh, a lack of nuclear weapons because we have too much of them, which is enough 20 times to kill everybody in the world. The whole planet, the whole uh, humanity. Uh, but what we lack today is uh, trust and mutual understanding. We need this political move, we need mutual trust, we need, we need mutual understanding in order to ban the nuclear weapons at all. Whatever happens in the world today uh, regarding any weapon of mass destruction, it, it is the lack of uh, trust among the people which allows the weapons of mass destruction to, to be existing and which uh, actually makes all the strategies all over the world happen, even today. So it is uh, not in the past, all this nuclear testing is not in the past, it is very much in the present, because those who uh, were exposed to radiation, their children, their uh, grandchildren, they still have the same consequences, they feel the consequences of this nuclear test. So uh, that is why I think uh, we are having this event today just to once again tell about the very deep conviction of Kazakhstan that we have to work all together to eliminate nuclear weapons in the world. Um, I have uh, two uh, guests today, tonight, who can speak about it. First, I would like to introduce uh, Roman Vasilenka, uh, Ambassador Blach. Maybe someone remembers him from his previous work at the embassy. Now he is very much involved with the initiative of Kazakhstan, which is called Atom Project. And he will explain you uh, what, what it means. Uh, and uh, another distinguished speaker today, tonight, uh, is the city. Gifted artist uh, who actually uh, was born with uh, some defects. Uh, he doesn't have hands, but he's expressing himself through the painting, which you can see uh, over there. There are some paintings of him, uh, through which he is actually explaining and trying to struggle uh, against new purpose. Because this is uh, the uh, he devotes his life uh, for this time. So, uh, with this, I would like to give the floor to uh, Ron Moslemka and uh, then to Karidek Kayuba. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Good evening, everyone.
everybody, thank you very much for coming and joining us tonight. Um, as um, Ambassador Umar said, uh, we mark today the International Day Against Nuclear Tests. And the day is very significant not only for Kazakhstan but for the entire world. We're coming uh, here uh, fresh from uh, a major event at the United Nations General Assembly where for the fourth straight year the United Nations gathers specifically to discuss uh, actions that the international community can take to jump start of the rather stalled nuclear disarmament process and they specifically do this now on August 29, on or around August 29 um, as a key date that uh, reminds people of the really truly horrors of the nuclear weapons testing uh, not only in Kazakhstan but throughout the world as uh, you might know, uh, the Soviet Union tested 600 devices in Kazakhstan over the span of four decades in uh, 456 tests. That is one quarter of all the nuclear weapons tests carried out in the world. And that affected uh, the lives and health of 1.5 million people in Kazakhstan who have died uh, or uh, contracted uh, diseases, uh, radiation related diseases uh, throughout all these four decades and this of course contaminated huge area of land in Kazakhstan um, which is still there uh, and which by some estimates can, can be as uh, large as the size of Germany. So uh, when Kazakhstan became independent uh, 22 years ago, it was natural for only two natural and there was only really one moral choice for President Nazarbayev to disarm this nuclear arsenal that Kazakhstan inherited from the Soviet Union, to shut down the nuclear test site and to ban on all nuclear weapons from the territory of Kazakhstan. And this opened a new era in the life of our country. Uh, this has paved the way, for example, for the establishment of the Central Asia Nuclear Weapons Free Zone, uh, of which Kazakhstan now is a coordinator. And this, um, we believe, has uh, helped um, put a stop to uh, nuclear weapons testing by other uh, nuclear weapon states. Because, as you know, since that time, uh, there, wasn't, uh, there hasn't been major nuclear weapons testing uh, done by any nuclear weapon states, they maintain moratorium. Uh, but the legal uh, prohibition of nuclear weapons tests in the world is not enforced, as we all know. And uh, the last major uh, breakthrough uh, in the nuclear disarmament area was the uh, adoption at the United Nations of the text of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Plan Treaty and opening this treaty for signing. Of course, uh, specialists in this area would know that uh, in the 17 years uh, there has been a great progress to get this uh, treaty enforced. Uh, however, despite the fact that 183 countries signed the treaty and 159 countries ratified the treaty, it still hasn't entered into force because of the so-called Appendix 2, which lists uh, 35 countries that need to ratify the treaty. And of these 35 countries, uh, 27 ratified now, including three nuclear weapon states, Russia, the United Kingdom and France. But there are eight holdouts which have not ratified, uh, which we all know, and which are basically uh, as I said today earlier, it's like a list of who's who in the international news in terms of political um, and uh, military conflicts. Uh, that's Egypt, Israel, Iran, India, Pakistan, China, and the United States. And I think I'm missing one. North Korea, of course. North Korea. <laughs> Which, uh, as we all know, tested a uh, nuclear uh, weapon this uh, early, uh, earlier this year, drawing serious condemnation from the United Nations and from, uh, from the entire international community. So, uh, realizing that there is uh, this uh, uh, gridlock um, in this um, in this area, the international community last year launched 
what is known as an open-ended working group at the United Nations, and uh, within a few weeks, they, the group will present its findings to the United Nations General Assembly, which will list the step the United uh, International Community should be taking towards global nuclear disarmament. But realizing that there was this gridlock, our president, a year ago, on August 29, launched the ATOM project. Uh, the ATOM is an acronym for Abolish Testing Our Mission. And uh, we, through that project, want to make the issue of um, nuclear prohibition of the uh, of banning nuclear weapons tests an issue for the uh, public, so that uh, the global community can, gets more information about the horrors of nuclear weapons tests and realizes that uh, this is not something of the past. This is. As the ambassador said, this is something that is here with us, and this is something which will be in the future if we don't act now. So, uh, as part of this project, we tell the stories of um, um, the victims of nuclear weapons tested in Kazakhstan. We want people throughout the world to not only Kazakhstan, but we want to, to tell the stories about other nuclear weapons testing victims everywhere. And already, uh, people from more than 100 countries signed the online petition calling on the leaders of the world to stop nuclear weapons testing and to make sure the treaty, which I mentioned, does enter into force. And of course, uh, for that, there needs to be a signature and ratification of the treaty by these eight countries. We have seen enthusiastic uh, response to this initiative wherever uh, we travel with this uh, idea, both within Kazakhstan and internationally. As I said, more than 100 people from more than 100 countries signed the online petition. And we are privileged to have here with us today the honorary ambassador of the Atom Project, the gifted artist, uh, the man who, with his life, has shown that uh, really mind is stronger than the body. And um, you have been able to see his paintings, and I think it is about time we hear what uh, Ambassador Kuyuko has to say. Yes. Uh, 
Это очень много людей просто умирало. И эти дети были, конечно, родители этих детей, они постоянно прятали этих детей, стеснялись их. But many people didn't live to see that day, and uh, there were a lot of children who didn't live to see that day. Their parents were ashamed, they were hiding them, they were showing them to anybody. In the year 1989, so in 89, when the first uh, movement started against nuclear testing in Sibi Palatinsk, I was at the very beginning of that movement. And uh, I have traveled uh, around the world, have been to many countries, including uh, the United States. This is not my first time here. I have been uh, to Nevada that side. I also went to Japan and I saw the tragedy that they had to go through. Я видел очень много матерей, которые слезы этих матерей, они сильно возбили мое сердце. Будь это мать американская мать, будь это японская мать Казахстана. Я решил, что пока у меня есть силы, пока у меня есть здоровье. Я хотел показать вот в своих картинах вот тех людей, наверное, то, что они, им пришлось пережить. И, может быть, если вы внимательно посмотрите на них, вы, наверное, все поймете. Потому что ядерная оружие, оно не выбирает <coughs> ни свет лица, ни полового различия. Все мы одинаково перейдете. I will bring my uh, paintings to people uh, to show people who live through that. And if you look at them, uh, maybe you will see it and understand them better. And uh, these things do not choose the color of the skin. They do not choose um, a male or female. They get everybody. At moment, I was <laughs> to и рассказали, наверное, всем своим друзьям, и чтобы люди вместе могли, наверное, противостоять вот этому атомному безумию. And I stand here in front of you as a little ambassador of the Atom Project, and I would ask you to send a petition online uh, to learn about the Atom Project and to let your friends and acquaintances know about it. Я думаю, что вы все здоровые люди. У вас есть руки, поэтому я призываю вас взяться за руки и, наверное, всем миром пришло время перезагрузки отношений человечества к ядерному алкоголю. And you know, you're, you will look healthy, you will have hands, so I uh, will for you to join your hands together. And uh, uh, as a whole world of hands together to reload and to change the attitude of people in the world to the new way of testing and weapons. Наверное, моя миссия в этом есть, чтобы я хочу добиться того, чтобы я, мы, наверное, были одним из последних пострадавших жертв всех ядерных испытаний. So is, uh, to to so, uh, Главное, что я желаю всем счастья и мира. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Roman and uh, for their emotional speeches. Uh, uh, just to conclude, uh, I just would like to mention one thing. Uh, uh, lately, uh, in the uh, U.S. press, I uh, noticed that uh, some journalists are trying to play with this thing. Uh, talking about uh, Kazakhstan as a country which is trying to use uh, the, uh, its strong record of non-cooperation uh, as an image project. I would like uh, to suggest to the journalists uh, to come to Semi uh, to look in the eyes of those mothers 
of those children and to understand that uh, this is a genuine condition of people of Kazakhstan to fight against nuclear tests and uh, to call for uh, the nuclear weapon-free world because this is not a play, this is not a game, this is uh, human tragedies, human lives which are behind all of this mess. And uh, I would uh, really uh, suggest that not to use the thing uh, as a kind of pretext to uh, uh, talk about Kazakhstan in a uh, negative topic. So with this, uh, I would like to, uh, to sign the petition if you can, if you would like to join uh, the movement. Uh, we would like, of course, uh, to see the U.S. to be ratifying the CTBD uh, because we think that if the U.S. will do that, uh, then the rest of the world will follow. Uh, I think we need a good example. And of course, we understand that it's a political issue, but what we need today is a political will. We need more trust, we need more confidence, uh, and we have to work together for that. With this, I would like to finalize this uh, part of our uh, today's reception. And, uh, I just would like to enjoy the food here and just intermingle and talk to Karibek if you would like to go to see the uh, pictures and just enjoy the rest of it. Thank you.